Welcome to part two of the virtual exhibit, Art and Iron, where we'll be exploring the New York Car Wheel Works. This exhibit is brought to you by Western New York Heritage and the Buffalo State Museum Studies Graduate Program. This episode has been curated by Buffalo State Museum Studies graduate students, Maria Johnson, Sasha Naples, and Alexandra Dwyer, under the guidance of lecturer Noel Wiedemer. In the late 1800s, the bustling city of Buffalo had robust steel and iron industries. The New York Car Wheel Works produced a train wheel proven to be so effective and long-lasting it was used around the globe. Located at the end of Forest Avenue at Niagara Street, the company provided the entire world with its quality car wheel from the late 1800s through the 1950s. Born in 1826 in Limerick, Ireland, Thomas Francis Griffin apprenticed as a molder or mold maker at Traverse and Benedict in Rochester, New York. He then opened a foundry in Detroit where the company initially manufactured 18 rail car wheels a day. While the exact date the Buffalo location was founded remains elusive, research shows it was formed sometime between 1870 and 1882. The company would initially be named Thomas F. Griffin and Sons. Once established, the Buffalo location manufactured about 200 wheels a day. While the location remained the same, the company operated under several different names, while mostly retaining the same principles. In addition to Thomas F. Griffin and Sons, it was known as the Griffin Car Wheel Company, the P.H. Griffin Machine Works, New York Car Wheel Works, and finally, the New York Car Wheel Company. Thomas Griffin's son, Patrick Henry, commonly referred to as P.H., was charged with running the Buffalo plant. His article in the Street Railway Journal describes the process of creating and testing a car wheel. Seven tests determine the quality of each wheel. If a defect was found, the wheel would be rejected. A savvy businessman, PH filed numerous patent applications. He also expanded the business internationally when he opened a foundry in St. Thomas, Ontario. The combined production output multiplied fivefold to 1,000 car wheels a day. Thomas Guilford Smith was born in Philadelphia and graduated with a civil engineering degree from Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute. When he came to Buffalo, he worked various engineering jobs before becoming vice president of New York Car Wheel Works. In 1899, P.H. and Smith combined car wheel companies from New York, Massachusetts, Pennsylvania, and Connecticut. The newly formed partnership was called the International Car Wheel Company of New Jersey and had a combined trust of $13 million. In 1913, Frederick B. Cooley and his brother William purchased the business and operated it under the name of the New York Car Wheel Company. A very active member of Buffalo Society, he was a member of the Buffalo Athletic Club, the Saturn Club, Tennis and Squash Club, Bridal and Saddle Club, and the University Club. He was also director of the Federal Trust Bank. A graduate of Harvard University, Frederick was president of the company until 1941. Frederick's son, Robert, followed in his father's footsteps, first at Harvard and then in the company. After World War II, the railroad industry began to decline with the rise of the interstate highway system and the rapid growth of the airline industry. As a result, Robert blamed steadily declining sales and high overhead for the decision to sell. Even though the railway system is still used today, the rapid decline in the 1950s called for many steel and iron industries to shut their doors. Robert was president until the company consolidated with the Albany Car Wheel Company in 1951. During World War II, the railway system was the primary means of transporting soldiers, equipment, and goods. Since much of the male workforce was away, the New York Car Wheel Company provided jobs to many Buffalo immigrant women, often of Italian and Polish heritage. 
Commissioned by the Farm Security Administration, the women were photographed in 1943 by Marjorie Collins, a well-known photojournalist remembered for documenting the American home front during the war. Additional images can be found by searching for New York Car Wheel Company on the Library of Congress website. This Sanborn insurance map from the 1950s lays out each room inside the factory. All throughout the foundry, the women would have been working their shifts. When zoomed in, the lockers and washroom where the women might have started their day can be seen. This Italian-American woman is powdering her nose before she starts her shift as a grinder and hooker. Since the women were newly hired, their locker room was still under construction. The plumber in the background was installing a sink. The Buffalo made wheels had traveled all around the world's railways. Their influence is shown on this world map from the 1800s. A few of those places included the United States, France, Russia, Cuba, China, Chile, and South Africa. Up next in the virtual exhibit Art and Iron, Part 3 explores the Matthews Northrop Company.